Yeah. That sounds like a slow burn, actually. Doing an eight-hour podcast Boy, while on acid. Uh, did you ever see, uh, a couple of years ago, Kyle did like this. Uh, he was trying to do 24 hours of straight Kyle Kemper, for on, people uh, who don't know, Kyle Kemper. On, uh, yeah, on Instagram. On LSD. He yeah. was on LSD yeah. for 24 hours yeah. straight. You hear that, folks? Put the camera on me, Justin. Kyle Kemper was on LSD for 24 <laughs> hours straight. We making wild out- And he went live on Instagram. <laughs> Dude, he made it like 12 hours. He was like, it was it was hard to just keep doing things. On, now, this was live on Instagram for, or it was, yeah. Yep, live 24 on Instagram. Hours. It was for a charity, but like. Every hour, he would have to like restart the Instagram because Instagram will only let you go live for an hour. So you do another live? Does he do? Is yeah, he doing the he same did. act over and over? Is he no, doing? He wasn't doing an act. It was just like him and Luke just like sitting here like this, like basically just shooting the shit, having a conversation. Yeah, and then they would do like little stuff like uh, Kyle would get on the treadmill, and for every dollar that you donate, they would bump the speed up. Dude, I like that, dude. dude I think I spent like twenty bucks just. Just fucking with Kyle. <laughs> Shout out Luke Capasso. Dude, I would love to work with him. I'm, I'm, I, want, I want to have him on my show. We've talked about it in the past, but, like, dude, I've just seen that he's been posting a lot of that. He used to have a podcast called, and maybe he still has it, but cr- Smoking Crack. Comedians in a Caravan Smoking Crack. Comedians in a Caravan Smoking Crack. Yeah. So I've been watching it. He's been posting a lot in reels, and they're really funny. Yeah. It's, like, insane, like, obscure, funny stuff. Yeah. I'm into that. Yeah. I'm into that vibe. So, like... I, I, I really like his uh, his creative ability. And, uh, yeah, dude, there's so many talented people in Dayton. And I was talking to this videographer about it earlier. Um, well, uh, my, Luke, not only. Like, no one's documenting it, but that's what like, I was getting at. Not only does he do that, but, like, he has his own entire YouTube channel where he does, like, home improvement stuff. And, oh, I uh, watch it. I watch his videos on that, too, his dude, reels and stuff. I never watched his YouTube channel, though. I didn't know he had one. He's my little Asian boy. He's building a pool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know those little Asian boys that like build a pool in the like Amazon or whatever? Yes. I, I would I could watch Luke Capasso videos all night long. Dude, I really want to get um a like a wooden sign of like the Morning Woods podcast made. He'll build it for you. I think he would be the guy. Yeah. He made a really cool stage for Kyle wait, when he was doing that outside show wait, at Wiley. Wait, wait for lumber prices to go back down. <laughs> yeah, fucking lumber price. You have to three D print it now. Make it out of plastic, and then that's how people that's how the aliens find me. Yeah, they're like, Let's look at the scan this QR code and see what. Oh my god, this guy has thousands of podcasts with a bunch of fucking comedians and fucking rappers and shit. It's crazy. I have no idea how I got here. I, I was saying that last night. I was telling DeAndre, I was like, I just started doing it in my living room six months ago, and then yeah. the next thing you know, like I'm in like a real studio and I'm in. I'm like trying to help showcase my friends and their talents, and well, that's how Joe Rogan started too. It was just in his room. It's all about other people, bro. Yeah. It's all about team, and like you're you're one of my oldest friends in comedy, and you're one of the people that like kind of like my cameraman Justin. Like I I like let's not. I don't want to go poor me or anything, but I did have like a like a crazy kind of childhood, so I moved around a lot, and I didn't have a ton of friends. So uh-huh. like my buddy Justin, who does the camera, he was one of my first friends that I met in high school when I moved to Fairborn. So. He's always been my homie, and you were one of my first homies in comedy who would like embrace me and kind of like told me like, "Don't be dumb." Like, there's a, you know what I mean, and like you kind of showed me the ropes a little bit. Yeah. You, Travis, Nick Taylor, um, Travis Charles, like shout out to those guys. So like, it uh yeah, it means something to me that like you know the you guys get seen too like that fucking that makes sense to me that people yeah, that I yeah. know that I ins- that inspired me or that I look up to. Like that, they get their voices heard too. That like that's what all of this means to me. That's what, that's what makes the most sense. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, dude, back to you. What size shoe do you wear, bro? Uh, Eleven, unless it's LeBron's, and I wear a twelve. Isn't that weird? You have good shoe game. Um, you know, and you also do look cool smoking cigarettes. I don't know if that part of it's out or life. Did that part of it get cut out? Yeah, probably. They're like, what is he talking we about? We had 10 minutes. <laughs> we had 10 minutes in the first segment, and we've had like 15 minutes of like, uh, how do you say, technical difficulties since you've been here. So most of the time that you've been here has been us trying to figure out the cameras <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> it's like that's, fucking. That's always the way it goes. Hey, man, it is what it is. This is uh, this is not all like uh, cookie cutter shit and copy and paste. you got to like check every connection every time and you sometimes it just doesn't work out so you gotta rewire shit and yeah man it is what it is though i'm glad you're here bro i appreciate you like taking your time to just fucking come and talk to me and just like that's all this is that's all this is it's like an appreciation of uh of other people um and you know and also it's 
obviously helps me um, put more content out. So it's like. So it's a start, win-win for everybody. You start paying us? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, some people <laughs> some people will get money from this. People who want to sign on to the network and um, comedians that, that uh, you know, that we feel like, you know, there's some stuff in the works here within this building, within Chris, my partner, um, that where we're going to, you know, I think we're going to make some pretty successful things happen out of here. And, yeah, there will be money for some podcasters and some comedians. That was the thing with Ray. I, I really I haven't had we're not gonna talk about well it yeah we can't talk about anything we have nothing set in stone and then on top of not having it verbally agreed on there's been no contractual things with anyone or anything like that these are just um, ideas that are being kind of built behind the scenes it's hearsay your honor it's, it's hearsay. hearsay there's nothing going on dude uh, have you been watching this you don't want to tell everybody your goals or your I don't tell everybody my dreams but I do share my goals these are these are short term goals of just getting this thing up and running the network so. have you been paying attention to this uh, Johnny Depp court case dude the only thing this is what i do i try not to look into it but i'll like watch content like whatever my friends are posting about i like look at the memes and look at the paragraphs that they write and then i just like ponder off of that and have my own thought you know dude. i don't really know what the fuck's going on though so that's what i'm saying uh johnny depp and is i don't i can't remember his wife's name amber heard yeah she's beautiful the, beautiful the divorce and uh uh i think she wants him to pay alimony but mm -hmm. like johnny depp's like she she beat me. Like, she beat the shit out of him. She, like, cut she his She took a shit off. in his bed. Yeah, took a shit in the man's bed, That's dude. the biggest, that's the funniest thing I've seen all like, week. there goes your alimony. Like, <laughs> she took a shit to in that. his bed, dude. But Listen, dude, like this, I, dude, I encourage people to shit in my bed, and they, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have enough money to get someone to shit in my bed, dude. <laughs> it does cost. It costs, but, but, it costs, bro. You gotta get Charmin. That's the thing. You know, if you wanna, and she probably uses a bidet. You know what I mean? No, she probably yeah, wipes her ass with his handkerchief. Yeah, his name is Tony Bidet, and he comes in and wipes her <laughs> Tony ass. Tony Bidet. <laughs> Get in here, Tony. Dude, what's up with all these strong men fucking cucking out, bro? Dude, it's that's it. Like, that Will Smith and Jada, now uh, Johnny Depp and his wife. Dude, I I think the uh, Me Too movement is going to swing back, and it's going to fucking hit some women that need to be fucking toppled, dude. Well, to every action, there is an equal and yeah, opposite reaction, yeah, right? Yeah, Einstein. She's about to get a taste of it. <laughs> He's about to get a taste of it. <laughs> dude, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp is like my favorite actor, dude. Dude, listen. So like hearing this shit. It's not affecting women either. It's not taking down his ratings, dude. My my girlfriend has been watching Pirates of the Caribbean on repeat. She just watched the entire fucking series. Yeah. My I, kids are watching it. My kids know who old junk drunk Johnny is. I don't talk about I I don't I haven't watched the Pirates of the Caribbean. Those like, are great films, yeah, that's dude. What I, it's what it's Kyle Disney. Said the same thing. I don't, I it's don't know. Disney. What do you? It's pirates. Whatever. Who cares? Oh, dude, it's Disney. <laughs> Yo, oh, oh, it's the around. biggest. It's the biggest production. It's the only company that still but, makes movies. But like he's Marvel, Disney, dude. This is it. Star Wars, all that shit. That's the only big productions we still Fear get. Fear Loathing in Las Vegas is my favorite movie. Second favorite movie is Blow. It's Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you resonate with him a little too much. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I think I think something clicked in his head when he started hanging out with Hunter S. Thompson because he became that motherfucker, dude. Did you know he's from Louisville, Kentucky? Oh, Hunter, Hunter S. Thompson. S. Thompson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Austin Baker told yeah. me that when he did my podcast. Muhammad when I was Ali, down too. Shout out Austin Baker. That's a funny motherfucker. Muhammad Ali is from Louisville. He uh, he named a couple of other people, too. And there was like a couple of famous authors. And I was like, wow, all these people are from Louisville. That's a cool-ass city, dude. Dane's I got like a lot. that it's right on the river and shit. Dane, uh, Dane, Ohio, in general, has a lot of music. Oh, time like if you if you were to go down a list of like famous bands that started in Ohio, you would. Be That's why shocked. I'm so blessed to be in this studio because so many people come in and out of here. Yeah, right in the Midwest. It's, it's a very it's, musical state. It's a musical state in general. It's a funk, very music popular state. But funk it, started in Dayton. Yeah, like, funk, the home of funk. How crazy Roger Troutman, that? right? Also, uh, the Dayton family. Yep, Dayton uh, family, Ohio uh, players. Ohio players. I yeah. think Zap. Zap or uh, I don't know what that is, but I've heard this too. Is something Zapman or Zap? I've heard this. I think his son does music or grandson or something too. Nice. Zaplin, Charles Zaplin. Dayton family's from Flint, Michigan. Okay, I'm thinking of the Ohio players. Dayton family is from Flint, Michigan, yeah, yeah. from Dayton Avenue. I do Dude, remember this. I'm a hip hop fan. I know this. You're right, Justin. Thank you for fact checking me. We got to get you a mic over there. There was one song that the Dayton family had when I was in high school that we used to play all the time. What was their, what was their banger? Dayton family? Yeah. I don't even know, dude. That's because it's like, I think 3-6 overshadowed a lot of other people for me yep. at that time. 
three six and like D twelve and Eminem. I was big fans of that shit. I liked I liked a lot of New York style rap too when I was a little younger, like Fifty Cent, and then even Cameron and Dipset. Yeah, those guys. We um, were uh, we were uh, Southern Fried. Southern Fried. Ludacris. Uh, I love Ludacris, um, bro. Yeah, the three Nappy six Roots. Mafia. Three six was yeah. big. Uh, man, there's so many. Remember Haystack in his day, yep, and yep. then uh, the Mystical. other Paul Wall, Mystical. Uh, who's the dude? Oh. North Carolina, fuck uh, Petey Pablo, Petey motherfucker. Yeah, I was gonna say his name's. Innocent. Come on, bro. You can't. You can't talk <laughs> about nineties rap. Ti too. Reason. Think about that. Ti yeah. from Atlanta. That that movie was killer too. Dude, yeah, he needs to. I watched that a comedy, bunch though. of times. You don't think he should do comedy? <laughs> I think. Tell me why you don't think Ti should be doing comedy. I want to know from a comedian's perspective. Because he keeps getting booed off stage. <laughs> you jealous piece of shit. You jealous of him, baby? I've never been booed off stage. I've never been booed off stage. Either, but one time I did have a girl and earlier in my career at an open mic. I had a girl say next next. You know the story. Were you there? I think, so. I think you were there. Next. She said next. And I was like, she don't even work here you or anything. Bitch. You, you. She just happened to be out for the night. And yeah. she was like, he ain't it. Yeah. And I was like, God, yeah, damn. she didn't care about ruining your dreams that night. Well, I wasn't even like uh, mentally equipped to be like, what yeah. bitch? Like, get out of here. You pull you. that classic line. Like, go I, home, mom. I had no idea what to say. I was like, all right, so we're going to bring up your next comedian. She's absolutely, <laughs> she's absolutely correct. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, she dude, that sucks, man. With like, you could just get. I uh, the first time I ever closed out Wiley Sunday Comics, very talkative crowd, and this chick would not shut up in the front row. And it was a black chick, so I didn't want to say something like too racist and lose the crowd. So like, like was, this isn't a movie theater. Yeah, you didn't want to say uh, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, or anything like that. I didn't want to lose the crowd. So like, yeah. but like eventually by the end of it, like other people in the crowd were telling her to shut up. I thought they were about to fight. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. bro. I've never seen anyone fight in a comedy show, but I've heard a lot about people. Three, it's You've happened, seen it's it? It happened during my set. Three At times. Wiley's? No. Uh, one time in uh, Muncie. Are you fucking cursed, my dude? Dude. Dude, what's I going stories, on? stories, man. No, dude. Okay, tell me these stories. So it happened in Muncie. It, Muncie, it, you remember Be Here Now? Uh, yeah, we did that show. Yeah, and so it's got the lower level where you're doing the comedy, and it's got this upper level with like a big hole in the middle to where you can like literally look up and you can see the people up there. And I had two drunk old dudes were just fucking yelling at each other at the bar. And I, like, as a comic, if, if there's something going on that's grabbing attention, you got to bring it up. You got to address it. So you, you can know? bring the room back to you. Yeah. So I just started, like, commenting their fight <laughs> or, the, or their <laughs> argument. And then eventually it was like, shut up. I was like, why don't you come down here and make me? <laughs> and, like, he started to get up or something like that. And then some other dude was like, shut the fuck down. And, like, then they started fighting. I was like, holy shit, son. And the second time so was, you started uh, a riot almost in, in Muncie, yeah, Indiana, the a geriatric riot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. I think you're one of those fucking, uh, one of those albino supremists, bro. <laughs> 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 I think you're a Blanco Supreme taco, Sumerian. bro. <laughs> uh, and then another time at, uh, Z's in Sydney, Colin Brun was running this open mic and this, these two dudes, man, or this, no, it was a dude. And a chick started arguing, and, like, he pushed the chick, and, like, she fell down, and then some other dude just fucking decked him. Fucking, I was recording my set, and I had my phone on the table, like, sitting, recording my set, and you can hear Robinette, like, comment in the fight <laughs> in my recording. He's like, man, you gotta get under him. Get under him. Dude. <laughs> he's like, he's blocking up top. He's oh, that's cuts. funny. Damn, son. Yeah, two fight. Damn, two. Where's the third one? Tell me the third. You're not uh, getting out of here without th that third, yeah, third fight story. Third one was uh, Colin Brown again. Uh, it was a show in Sydney and uh, different place in Sydney. But uh, like Colin went up and told this dude, he was like, "Man, you gotta keep, like very politely." He was like, "Yeah, gotta keep it down, man. You're being a little too loud." And the dude just gets up and pours a beer on Colin's head. What the? <laughs> yeah, fuck, like uh, like escalated it super fast and. That's crazy. Take it outside. <laughs> That's crazy. I have a hard time not saying stuff to people. Like, I get off track, and I, I like it, though. Sometimes it can be fun to, like, address the crowd and, like, really uh, just be like, dude, I've been doing these jokes for, like, four years. Like, what what are you talking about right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Let's it, might, have it a, might give you something for the joke. If you're on fire and you're already, like, kind of warmed up in there, dude, yeah. and you've been doing shows all week, like, you, yeah, you're on it. Like, you're... Dude. I love it when it's like you, you get like two good jokes out and the crowd's like, we like this dude. You know what yes. I'm saying? So the crowd's already like, whatever you say, we're going to laugh at. Cause then you can just go crazy. Dude. Yeah. 
just start fucking. You just tag the shit out of it. You, you can know? use those. You pull those tags out of the bag that like you haven't ever used that someone told you three months ago at a bar, yeah. and you're yeah. like, finally get the get to use that fucking yeah, yeah. brand new jokes and stuff, and it's crushing. Like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, that's called. Uh, I was with uh, Alex Eakin. I did a show. I did a podcast with him, and he called it. Um, he called it cooking. He was like, I was. He was explaining it. He was explaining the fact that like he had to do something, and then. Yeah, uh, he had to bury himself out because he fucked up in the middle of a like a, like a long set. So he like bury himself out. But he was like, he was like, man, I was really cooking, and I was like, that's a good way to say it. Yeah, yeah. Like when you're up there and you're really on fire, and you yep. know you got more heat, and you know that you got more time than the clock at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's like I have more ideas than you guys can actually stand right now because yeah, yeah. I'm only doing 20 minutes up yep. here, and I got some other stuff that you didn't get to do because you you really got in the moment and. Yep. Yeah, I think in the pocket, co- cooking up it. in the pocket. I call it in the pocket. I think like Joe Rogan refers to it as like his flow state. Yeah, right. Or like Zen masters kind of mm. think of, think it like that too. That it's like a, it's a state of mind that you have to be in. They're and, uh, uh, they're trying to hack that. Have you heard about that? Dude, biohacking's a real thing, my dude. Hacking flow states. I dude. take uh, I take. It's not Alpha Brain, but I take. Uh, it's called Bocapa Monieri. There's a couple <laughs> different companies that make it. It's a little. Like I take uh, heroin. It's a little <laughs> cheaper than Alpha Brain. I don't take heroin. <laughs> That's just one thing I never did. Just, just a little it's bit. Not the know? only thing I've never did. I just wouldn't do heroin. I don't think it's good for you. It's probably great though. I mean, honestly, them if Chinese we're gonna people, be like, dude, them Chinese people live for a long time just smoking. Oh, opium. the opium because they're just yeah. smoking it. That's the thing is, you start getting dangerous when you start injecting yourself with high amounts of <laughs> you like <hear> that, kids. <laughs> No, I totally believe this. I uh, This is probably going to get me in trouble someday, but I totally believe that everything should be legal, like some parts of Europe. And uh, uh, Justin, could you look it up, actually, where in Europe that they have clean injection sites? There's actually places yeah. that... Um, Amsterdam. Is it Amsterdam? I'm pretty sure. There, and I think there's no, some uh, other countries uh, over there, too. It's they don't do it in America, but that's something that we should implement here. I mean, we really should be giving people, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it, but we should be giving them clean needles. We should yeah. be te- help, letting them test their drugs on sites where you know you're not getting fentanyl or whatever, unless you want that. Here's my thing. is like, if we'll, we'll let you eat yourself to death on Burger King. Fucking right. It's not about your health. That's the American not dream, baby. Legal. So if you're going to say you can put, like, it's their body. They can put whatever they want into their body. We have rules in place. Like if you get strung out and you go rob a place, we have rules in place. You know, we have laws in place for that. Yeah. So as long as you're not hurting anyone. Oh, there's 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 safe nice. injection sites in America now in New York City. I think that's fantastic. I don't think it's great that people are shooting up in the park. You know what I mean? Yeah, if yeah. I visit New York, I want to take my kids to Central Park. It's like, I don't want them fucking well, walking can. over needles. You can. You just don't do it after dark. You do it at 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're still passed out. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It still smells like wine around here, but uh, it's fine. They've been smoking cracks since 642. <laughs> <laughs> you know a, how people those party safe, out there. Those safe injection sites are actually just old phone booths. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do something with them, dude. They were like, we've been growing weed with them in the high rise buildings, yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> That's how we grow indicas here. They get real tall. Um, yeah, dude. Fucking safe injection phone booths, dude. That's perfect. You can just, hey, look, uh, in the future, dude, if they had like those suicide booths, like in Futurama, Futurama yeah. that show all the time, I watched it as a kid, probably when I was like my son's age, like five years old. It influences me so much in the way that I think and like the way that I see where we're going. Right. And all the automation and all the like Elon Musk is going to suck us through tunnels and shit. We're going to, you know what I'm (laughs) saying? What's going on? Elon Musk is going to suck us through tunnels, bro. He's going to blow us while we're in tunnels. I think so. I think (laughs) Jeff Bezos is going to, he's just going to start sending carbon (laughs) copies of us to the, to the uh, site and we're going to have to build it ourselves, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want something from Amazon in the future, you're going to have to, like, fucking teleport to the factory and build it yourself. Bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Myers. Yeah. You know how Meyer and Walmart, basically, you have to work there yeah, now, yeah. bro. When you go to the grocery store, you got to check yourself out. Yeah. You got to fucking find your own, the good produce. Like, they just bulk it up, and they just, they're like, yeah, the robots are out there. Figure it yeah. out. Yeah, Jeff Bezos is going to have us at his Amazon house. Factory. He's like, I got everything you need. But it's you actually in his together. backyard, so he saves taxes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, I keep the factory here. He's like, I tell you what, I'll even give you 10 bucks. <laughs> he makes you wear an elf costume. You're like, this isn't right, Jeff. I just wanted a blender. There's no reason for me to be wearing this fucking bell. <laughs> this is fucking sick, Jeffrey. Should uh, you, you should make it. We should do a sploof Alex Jones. 
That's like, hilarious. Like info war. We, Dude, I feel like that's who I I'm somewhere between Joe Rogan and Alex Jones. Yeah, I swear to God. You a little closer to Alex Jones. I can't figure it out yet, but do you want to talk about the drones in China? <laughs> the, the, the FBI is making the, the frogs gay. Dude, the frog's been gay, How bro. How crazy is it that that turned out to be true? It's not. It's, <laughs> this is the thing. Like the craziest this shit is the he thing, said though. was true. That's not the craziest shit he said, motherfucker. Well, that's true, yeah. You got to say that. He got, you know, all, uh, that's, that is neither here nor there. But what I will say, if you want to go down the rabbit hole of, like, not government conspiracy, just Big Brother and, like, um, in general, right now in China and Hong Kong, they have everyone locked in their house. You can't go outside, and Second they are wave. they are tested. There are people in hazmat suits going door to door and testing people without consent. Right now <coughs> in China, I'm not saying that they're tearing. I'm not saying they're killing people. There's a lot of videos being leaked online of massive people screaming and shit, and people filming it from their building, but they can't see what's going on down in the street. And they're saying that there's large crowds of people screaming, and there's also drones flying around everywhere around the city because people are singing from their balconies, and they're telling the drones are literally saying, and we could pull this up, but we don't have the capa- capacity right now. We're still learning the system. Capacity. Capacity. We're still learning the system, <laughs> but we're gonna be able to pull YouTube clips and things like that, TikToks and stuff up in the future here. But uh, it's something I'll just send you the link on it. But um, I know you got to be going soon, so we're gonna cut this off soon. But I just wanted to get this this off of my chest because I've been like. I've been thinking about it a lot, bro. It's like these people in China, these drones that they're sending out, like fly around the buildings and monitor people. Yeah. The drones are saying things like, you know, uh, go back inside, uh, you know, stop singing. Nothing to see here, folks. Basically <laughs> nothing to see here. Yeah. Like do not try to uh, pretend like you have like fucking freedom, like and shit like that. Well, they're, they don't. That's the thing. That's what the drones they are don't. selling them. Yeah. The robots are telling them that like fucking yeah. what's that movie they just put out that was really big. Uh, what's, it's not the Hunger Games, but drones in it. No, dude, my no. the fucking with the people wear the green jumpsuits and shit. It was like a huge oh, movie. Uh, Squid Games. Squid Games. I think that's what's really going on over there. I think they're rounding people up who got COVID and making them Squid Game, bro. That'd be dope. Why, I'd dude? Watch why it, is dude. that not happening? Everybody in the country it. liked it, and they were yeah. like, "Dude, this is like a test." They were like, "Man, people fuck with this heavy. We should yeah. we'll watch watch season two come out next year, and people, everyone in the country doesn't know that we're watching real snuff." Like if, we're if, watching real yeah. death go on because like if, it's a big if, production. We don't get it or something. If Hunger Games was real, like the first two seasons, people would be like, "Man, I, this is terrible. This is you. This is uh, you shouldn't be doing this to people." It's gonna be real, but bro. By season three, you're gonna be like, "Oh man, it's gonna win." It's gonna be real. I was <laughs> like, it's just like the the movie Death Race. That concept has been around yeah, for even yeah, longer yeah. than that. People yeah. were killing each other in arenas in the Roman times, my dude. Let's bring it back, dude. Bring it back. Bring it, get them lions out. There. Bring it back, dude. Oh my god, dude! If, if Peta, real Bengal tigers were eating football players, I would go to a Cincinnati game. Peter would be all over it. Like you leave those tigers alone and let those men kill each other. You're fucking right. That's what, yeah, exactly. They're like, do those tigers have their shots before you send yeah. them out there to fight to the death? Like no, those those tigers they don't have antibiotics. Those tigers are on death row too. Those tigers are on death. <laughs> these are the worst of the worst yeah. tigers with like tattoos and scars on their eye and shit. It's literally scar. It's from scar the for the, Yeah, every villain from from the Jungle Book and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. Well, you know what? I know you got to get to work, bro, in like five minutes. But uh, I appreciate you coming tonight. This has been really fun talking with you. And uh, yeah, dude, I'll send this shit to you when uh, when you're done. I think this has been a pretty cool conversation. Yeah. So I'm gonna send it into my. Uh, it's gonna be my festival submission. Your fat, yeah. You send this in for your fat. I need a really good tape. That's what I need. Are you doing Clash of the Comics? Ah, uh, we'll see. You know what? Well, I am. I will be at Funny... Justin, put the cameras on me, please, sir. I will be at Dayton Funny Bone next month. Uh, that is May 26th. That's a Thursday, May 26th at 7 p.m. Clash of the Comics. Make sure you guys uh, get your tickets for me, actually. I have 20 tickets. So you got... It's it's a free show. I'm just inviting 20 of my friends. I have I have tickets, and you don't have to do anything but show up. So I'll, I'll give you the ticket. And two-item minimum. Uh, yeah, well, you have to buy two... That's standard. If you go out to a restaurant or a club, you know, you have to buy two items. That's, that's pretty standard. I don't think you have to state. Do you have to state that to people? I would I would because my friends would be like you said we didn't have to do anything. Buy some nachos <laughs> in a buy some nachos in a Pepsi. That's not a big deal. But you get to get in for free. At least you get to get in for free, and you yep. get to support the homie. Uh, and it's a good look for yep. me. It's and my I, first show at Dayton Funny Bone. So. I know half the people that are signing up, and it's it's gonna be a good one, dude. Some good comics. I'm excited. I'm well, really wait, excited. I'm wait till the second one when all the good comics already did it. So mm-hmm. it's just been me and a bunch of shitty ones. <laughs> well, uh, Lord willing, I'll be back in October for the finals. So uh, we'll see what happens. But it's basically that's like the new funniest person in a Dayton contest yeah. this year. 
No, I think that's, no, no, no. Wiley, that's Wiley's. Wiley's still doing the fireworks contest. They still though. do the fireworks. Yeah. So this is kind of a different title, but you get bragging rights. Yeah. And from what I read, there's also going to be a chance to get work through the bone. Mm-hmm. If, if you're funny, bro, and you bring people and you're, you know, you're marketable. Uh, what, you know, I think what it is, what are you going to say? What they, how they used to do it at the other funny bones is you do the clash. The winner gets a hundred bucks. You win three clashes in a row. You get a weekend. Okay. And then they have the finals where it's like the winner, you know, like the, all the winners place against each other. And I think you get a feature week for that. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, shit. That's but what what I, I from, that's okay. What that might, that's probably still what's going on there. From what I read that who, whoever wins the first one hosts the next one. And then I think oh. everyone goes and then all the winners will be at the last one and the, for the finals. Now I don't so know. The finals will probably be for a weekend. Yeah. And it didn't exactly say a weekend. It didn't really confirm what we would get if we were to win the contest, but it did give like a vague description that you would get some work. work. Yeah. yeah. They say work and I'm sure, you know, that, that comes at different levels for different people. And a lot of that's who, you know, too, you Truth. know, at the end of the day, but yeah, but buddy, thank you for coming so much. It was awesome seeing you again and, and hanging out man. with you. And thank you guys for watching this. Make sure you guys uh, come check me out at the date and funny bone next month, May 26th. I'll also be in Louisville at planet of the tapes. Uh, that's an open mic, but it's a Wednesday night. If you guys are going to be down in the area, yeah, I'll be in Louisville at planet of the tapes, open mic on, um, did I say December? I'm sorry. What's the, what month is it? I'm so stoned right now. What month April. is it? April. So I'll be there in May. I'll be there May 16th at Planet of the Tapes and then May 26th <laughs> at Dayton Funny Bone. All right, guys. Have a good time. Uh, 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 June, John, you want to plug anything? In, in Please ju- do. In June, I'll be at Go Bananas for the Funniest Person in Cincinnati Finals. Funniest Person in Cincinnati Finals. You just... Oh, dude. We didn't even talk about that the whole time. That's right, bro. <laughs> I literally saw that picture on my Facebook, wrote you, and then that's the fucking... That's so crazy. I forgot to even bring it up. I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that you advanced and I hope you do good in that too. Funniest person in Cincinnati contest. Say the date again. I, I don't know yet. Who, you know what? Who gives a shit? They're going to email him because he's, he's, he's the shit and they know it. They can smell it on him and he needs to wipe his anus. All right. Goodbye. Have a good night. Have a good night. All right.